This is NCC Unplugged. Welcome back to another episode of NCC Unplugged. I feel like it's been so long. We've had special guests and different things come in, and it's just been been a while since I've been here in the driver's seat of this podcast. So I'm excited to bring a special episode talking about our new Thursday evening service. And I'm joined with my good friend and coworker, Joshua Persall. Hello. I'm glad to be with you all today. Looking forward to our conversation. This uh, this topic is one that we are very excited about and anticipating in a big way. Yeah. So really, our basis for this podcast is to talk about some of the reasoning behind the starting of a third service and why it's a Thursday, uh, what it's going to look like, some of the details that we've ironed out. And so uh, back up a little bit and do um, maybe, what do they say, 50,000 foot look at our vision behind this. So Joshua, can you speak a little bit to our vision as a church and where this service was even birthed out of to begin with? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our vision as a church, really, it has a, a couple things that are really key. One is that we want to be growing spiritually. Uh, one, one thing that we, maybe a word that we use, can be a little bit of a churchy word, but it's a descriptive word, is that we want to be disciples and we want to make disciples. And going back at five years, when we went through a process, the elders and the staff of discerning our vision and not just having it in our hearts, but also getting it on paper mm-hmm. so it could be something that guided us. We, As we prayed through it and as the different leaders really spoke their heart about our church, we came down to two big things. One is that we're a church where we are going to be growing to be more like Jesus. And the second big thing, and this really ties into the Thursday night a lot, is that we're going to be a church that's reaching out and specifically reaching out to the community that's closest by, kind of that inner circle, if you want to say a five or 10 mile radius of where our building's located, we feel a special calling to those people and to mm-hmm. those neighborhoods. So that's, both of those parts are important, but that part especially has been a big driver for where Thursday night Thursday night service is coming from. Yeah, uh, something that's included in our vision a lot, uh, I think a few different times is the word refuge. And like when you're talking about the radius of our church, we want people in that radius to see our church as a refuge. Mm-hmm. And I have the um, just great opportunity to be able to sit down and talk to so many people that are coming to our church that are brand new. You know, they want mm-hmm. more information, questions about certain things. So I often say, hey, come in and meet. Let's talk about it. And just this week, again, sat down with a, with a wonderful couple. They're uh, great church people, but the church they come from is involved in a split and some decisions have been made on a higher level that are influencing them and, and the beliefs of the church. And so they're finding themselves in a position where they have to leave the church. And um, so talking to them about what we do and, and not pressuring them to become members or anything, just letting them know, hey, this is who we are, this is what we do. And they said... Um, you know, this is all great and we're excited to get involved and, you know, some things that uh, really, um, really exciting to them. But they said, we need some time. We think we need some time to heal first. And I've heard that before. And I, I think of a lot of different people at our church that have had to heal from church hurt, uh, heal from uh, maybe some wrong beliefs that they had from when they were younger um, and so we want to be a church where people can access God in, in where they are now. You know, we don't want to say, hey, before you come, you need to get X, Y, and Z right in your life. Um, and so we, we, have, we are a church that has been that refuge for a lot of people, and that's been really neat to see in a lot of different ways. And so, like you said, the thought of having a service outside of a Sunday context, um, started really getting the ball rolling with us when we were thinking, okay, maybe this is where God is leading us. And once that ball started rolling, I think we really felt um, a need to make a service that's accessible for people that you know might be in the healthcare industry that can't make Sunday work, uh, might have a family dynamic that Sundays can't work, um, and once we started thinking in that direction, hey, this could be a service not just to alleviate room on a Sunday morning, because that's where we were for a good bit, 
hey, we're overflowing on Sunday. We need to create more space on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. Once we started thinking outside that box, um, like I said, that ball just started rolling. Um, and so Thursday, speak on that a little bit because you went to a conference, you heard some rumblings of other churches starting Thursday. You heard, hey, now that our minds are shifting a little bit outside of Sunday, maybe this is where we need to go. Sure, yeah. And uh, even even before uh, I came here to NCC, so six years ago, I was serving with a church in Ohio. And the whole time I was there, we were doing a Saturday night. And mm-hmm. it was a Saturday night plus two on Sunday. And it was it was very much an anchor of, of what the church was doing. It wasn't like the biggest service, but it was very important. And so that was what was always on my mind as a next step. If you had two on Sunday, then Saturday night would be that next step. But the more and more, as of course, we had the COVID and then kind of as everybody was getting back on their feet after 2020, and I went to a couple different conferences, one in Texas that was just executive ministers and pastors, and then we all went to one just last year or just this past spring in Indianapolis um, with Renew. And in both of those conferences, I, I was able to get into conversations with other with other executive and, and senior ministers and have these conversations about what does this, mm-hmm. what's that day that seems to be working? And overwhelmingly, it was, hey, Saturday is complicated. We've in Saturday's a little more like we've 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 been there and done that. And there's some challenges with that. And Thursday seems to be what's working for a lot of churches and a lot of places in the country. Now, mm-hmm. now don't get me wrong. It's not like if you do uh, if you do a Google search, you're gonna find half the church is having a Thursday night service. Right. That's not the case, but Churches who are so fortunate and blessed to be having lots of people come their way and they're trying to make more space and more accessibility, and they have the vision and the resources and the staff to really be reaching out into their communities, Thursday night is one that's working. And I think a few reasons are that we do have we do have families we do and others do that they're out of town on the weekends, whether it's travel sports or whether it's mm-hmm. uh, maybe going to the lake or just doing things. Uh, that they that they enjoy doing on the weekends are just not as available on a on a Sunday or on a Saturday. So there's mm-hmm. that dynamic. And you mentioned like working in healthcare, and someone that may be working a weekend shift in healthcare Saturday night may not be possible for them as well. So those are mm-hmm. those are some of the things that played into it. And and we know in these conversations, it's not like there's a right and a wrong necessarily. That uh, you know, God is not saying it's it's wrong to do it on a Saturday and right on a Thursday. Or another conversation we maybe get into later, is it, is it right to have it on a Thursday? Mm-hmm. But it's just a matter of how are we best able to connect to the people mm-hmm. that we're trying to reach and make it accessible for them. Yeah, yeah. And I think the more we've uh, talked to people about this, now that it's kind of out there and this is what we're starting, because for a while there it was kind of behind the scenes, making sure it could work with some different things that we're doing as a church outside of services. Um you and I both have had conversations with people where it's, oh, we haven't even thought of that crowd that might be interested. Um, talking to someone at the church picnic, they were invited by a friend. They're not currently part of NCC. They've never been to one of our services, but they're open to coming to the church picnic with a friend. I was in line with with them while or her while we were getting food and um, mentioned the Thursday service. And she said, oh, well, you know, I have this custody issue and uh, Thursdays actually would work. And I'd never thought, because that's mm-hmm. just not my context. I not thought of someone that, yeah, is juggling custody of their kids and, and when they're dropping them off and picking them up and when they have them and when, when she's available now to go to service and Thursday would, would work. And she said, you know, this is, this is something that, um, just resonated with her. And so that was neat to see, Hey, this is something when we're willing to open, open the mold a little bit of what we've created outside of Sunday morning. There's some others that we haven't thought of that now fit that, that ability to, to make that service. And so that was neat to have that conversation, you know, just earlier this week. Yeah. And there were, there were a couple other surprises that we had once we started, once we started sharing this out is we've, there were some people where some people may be going through chemo treatment and they, they don't need to be around large crowds, but Mm -hmm. maybe, you know, a hundred people on a Thursday night would be comfortable for them, yeah. or uh, some some people that may be already part of church, but due to failing health, it's hard to get going in the morning. But an evening would work for them. Mm-hmm. So 
just some demographics that we weren't really thinking of, Mm -hmm. but that as we put the word out there, it's just like, oh, here's some neat things. And maybe even some young families we've heard from that Thursday night just works better with where they're at with their children and different things like that. Yeah. So So let's talk a little bit about those details since we're there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like you talked about children coming, we are uh, planning a full children's programs, uh, children's classes. Um, Allison's working hard on getting uh, adults there, uh, volunteers being part of the classes, teachers, all of that. Um, so that's, I think, a great aspect of the service to have that those children's programs available. Um, and so nursery, toddlers, all the way through fourth grade, uh, or sixth grade, sorry, all the way through sixth grade. Uh, so that's going to be really neat. And so we'll have our middle school and high schoolers be part of the service uh, with their parents. Um. We've reached out to a lot of our ministry leaders as far as, you know, staffing um, the welcome desk and having people ready to check kids in to help. And um, so speak to that a little bit, the the people you've been in contact with, how's the response been with with people being and that? We're calling that our launch team, trying to get this this core group of volunteers ready to launch this service. Yeah, no, no surprise to us is that, you know, our church family is just rallying to mm-hmm. this this opportunity mm-hmm. and it's it's a big ask you know we we ask a lot of people in different scenarios it just takes it takes so many volunteer volunteer hours and availability for the ministry of NCC to be what it is and i mean that is the heart mm-hmm. of of our ministry are these volunteers that love jesus they believe in the vision that we have in a church so it is not an easy undertaking to add a service as you mentioned just all the different dynamics because we want this service. We want this service to have all of the all of the safety and just all of the excellence that mm-hmm. all of our services do. So it's not a small undertaking, but our church is just really rose to the occasion. We have over forty people now on our launch team, and that's that awesome, is yeah. just it's just phenomenal to think about Absolutely. that many people. You know, and some of them are probably thinking, "Hey, Thursday night is just a great time for me to go to church and to serve." And other people are just thinking. Hey, you know what? I am willing to give a couple hours on a Thursday night to travel here to be here and serve because I believe it's making a difference for Jesus. Because I want to see people who are not following Jesus right now. I want to see them following Jesus, and you can just see them. You can see that in their hearts. And I mean, that kind of stuff just it just mm-hmm. it just excites me to no end. It just keeps me going, and I'm just so thankful to our church family and how supportive they yeah. they are right now with yeah. the launch team. So. All of our ministries are looking solid, and, I, and you know I'm sure there's challenges in this, and there'll be some holes to fill. But mm-hmm. but we are so encouraged mm-hmm. at the response that there's been for helping get this off the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, like you said, the volunteers are seeing the vision that because of this service, more people will know Jesus. There are people in our community that do not know Jesus and will because of this service, and our volunteers see that and want to be a part of that. And so it's. Like you said, it's been so great to see people step up and, and see how it's going to work with their family and figure it out. And, and someone that we talked to uh, was saying, you know, they're seeing this as their Thursday is their serve opportunity. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to come back on Sunday to to worship and fully be present in that worship and not, not serve while worshiping. And uh, so that's just a neat dynamic that they're able to work out and their family and and maybe some others are as well. So we're excited about that. A few other details of the service, you know, with this service is um, looking as much as possible like a Sunday service, our, our current Sunday service. Uh, in fact, we're going to sing the same worship songs uh, because of time. We're going to reduce the time a little bit. So we're going to probably uh, drop two songs uh, from the set list and our songs uh, will be sung in a little bit of a different style. Right now we're looking to do, an acoustic style, uh, partly because it's an evening service. It's just going to feel different being <laughs> being in the building on an evening. And uh, so we're going to play into that a little bit. Uh, but even just our volunteers, you know, uh, so there'll be guitar and keyboard and a singer or two. And so just there's going to be less up there. Uh, so it won't be as full of a band. Uh, that's our really probably our biggest change in the service. Uh, the sermon's going to be the same. Um, we're hoping the community ma- community meditation will be the same. We're asking the people that do it on Sunday morning to come on Thursday if they're able to do that meditation. Um, 
same announcements, you know, so that we're trying, this isn't a separate church that's meeting in the building. This is the same service, just at a different time. Uh, so as much as possible, we're trying to keep the services united in that way when we're able to do it. Uh, one question I've, I've received a lot is, how is the sermon going to work? Are you preaching the sermon on Sunday and then again on Thursday? Or are you preaching the sermon to start with on Thursday and then again on Sunday? And that's how I'm doing it. The, the sermon's going to be preached for the first time on Thursday. So that's technically the first service is our Thursday service. Um, and then I'll have to think about it all weekend and, you know, what I said that didn't quite make sense or whatever, how to tweak it maybe a little bit. And then uh, preach it again on Sunday at 845 is technically our second service, but we're not going to call it that, but that's kind of what it looks like. And some people are just curious about how that's going to work out. So I see a new game evolving. So the people who come to Thursday night are going to call their friends who went to Sunday morning and say, now what did the sermon say on what, Sunday morning? What changed? Just to see yeah. how much changed. <laughs> Figure out what, what I thought didn't work and, and it changed. But um, Can you imagine doing it, how hard it would be for you to do it the other way? Like if you started on Sunday and then you carried that same sermon back to Thursday, then you would only have Friday and Saturday to to get ready for the next Sunday. Well, well that's the thing. Or <laughs> I'd be preparing the next week while still having that in the back of my mind know, to preach yeah. again. And so I don't think those people had really thought, thought that through <laughs> right, right. how hard that would be. Um, and so, and I mean, that even goes back to why Thursday and maybe not like a Wednesday, mm -hmm. you know, preparing the sermon takes a good bit of time. And so we do feel like, you know, we could get the bulletin ready and the slides and all of that by Thursday. And so that's going to be a shift in how that currently works and some behind the scenes and other volunteers that are being asked to change their rhythms and their week. And so, again, that's some of the behind the scenes of the launch team going. Uh, even if they're not there on Thursday night, they're being asked to do some of these these things earlier in the week and, and some more time dedicated to it. So, um those are some of the details of the service. Any other details? Maybe some questions that you've received on the details of the service? One, one thing you mentioned, Wednesday nights. Um, you know, some churches have a Wednesday night prayer service or Bible study that's not like their Sunday, that's mm -hmm. different. And that's something that people have mentioned. So it's just good to be clear that our Thursday night is like a Sunday service and we, or like one of the services we currently have on Sundays. And when we think about, when we think about a... Uh, a healthy spiritual life and rhythms. We we envision people that you have a worship service that you go to every week. You have a small group that you are in touch with every mm -hmm. week, every other week, and that you've got a place to serve. So this is not something we're expecting people to come Sunday and Thursday, but right, it's, right. it's something like, hey, this is this is that collective worship worship time. And so it's different from maybe what mm -hmm. some churches do, and some churches, especially you know, 20, 30 years ago, were doing on Wednesday nights, which was good stuff. But this is just different. A lot of what churches have previously done on Wednesday nights, that that discipleship and that learning is what happens in our small group context. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah and our, we have a phenomenal small group, and I can say that because I'm not the one organizing it. We're, uh, we just have a great foundation that's been laid, and now we've seen some thriving groups. Um, and so some of that even changes with the Thursday service. Um, we, we do have other spaces in our building, to, for small groups to meet some who are meeting Thursday so they can still meet if they meet at the building, many of them meet in, in homes. Um, so there's still some spaces available if that happens on a Thursday night. Um, we have some other shifts in our programs. You know, we have a karate program that was meeting on Thursdays um, and they're now going to meet earlier in the day um, and a, in the same space, but our kids programming is going to meet in a different place. So there's been some shifts and different things like that, but um, it's been great to see people say, hey, if this this shift means people are going to come to know Jesus, then we're willing to, to shift a little bit or to change what we're doing. So small groups are still very active and, you know, some, some may come out of this Thursday night where they go, hey, we can stay out a little bit later. So we're going to go to service and then go to the restaurant together with this group of yeah. five or six and call this our small group and meet and, mm -hmm. and have a conversation about the service after or this book that goes. So we're excited to see what might spring out of this service as far as other programming goes. Yeah. And I think you touched on that earlier is, is when you, when you do something different, a lot of times you don't always anticipate what's going to come out mm -hmm. of it. 
And we've experimented with this in the past two or three years, just with like Easter services and Christmas services, doing things on a day that might not be traditional or expected, mm-hmm. doing an extra service the evening before. And what's been so exciting is it, it feels like every time we try something like that, our community, our church, they just really jump into it mm-hmm. and we see things that we would not have expected. And so that's, that is our posture going into this, uh, is that we, we expect that God's going to do some things through this we haven't, we haven't even been able to dream of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're just, we're really, we feel confident that God has led us in this direction and we are, we're eager to humbly, just humbly step into it mm-hmm. and move forward. So as far as details on Thursday night, I think we covered a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, one thing that we want people to know is that it's Thursday night is not, it's not a, it's not a secondary service. It's not less than, yeah. it's not like you, you start with Thursday nights and then when you get to follow Jesus better then you graduate to Sunday. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's not our intention right. now. And it's cool. We know people will be moving. Or we know people will be shifting around because you'll have a family like, oh man, we, we're going to be out of town this weekend, but we'd love to experience in-person church. So I'm going to go on Thursday night, even though their mm-hmm. regular service might be Sunday. So we're, we, we love that. Move mm-hmm. around, you know, come when, you, come when it works for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also we, we're all united. All three services are yeah. part of who we are as a church uh, and we already deal with that dynamic with first service and second. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of cool in between services. Sometimes people meet people as they're coming and going, and they're like, "Oh wow, I did I didn't know you." You know, yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of fun and just like having our church picnic, of, you know, a few weeks ago and just seeing everybody together. That's something special. But mm-hmm. for practical reasons, we're meeting at different times, and it's good because it helps us reach more people. And there's going to be. There's going to be a dynamic, as you spoke about earlier, Thursday night is in an evening. It feels different. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a connecting and a social dynamic to that that's different than a Sunday. Maybe maybe not better, just different. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a way that 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 people connect that's going to be special. And I think I think it's really going to work out well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So let's hit on a little bit uh, the biblical aspect of of a service outside of Sunday because as a non-denominational church, uh, we have often said, you know, we're, we're not just doing things to do things or because they're a tradition or because we have a higher uh, governance that says we need to fit into this mold. Um, and so a decision like this, you know, from from our elders that are the leaders of our church to the staff, um, we, our authority is scripture to Absolutely. say, look, we want to go back to scripture. Is this okay? How we practice it this way do we see this in scripture? Do we see freedom to do this in scripture? And so we've had discussions about this uh, amongst ourselves and with others. Um, and I, some of it comes down to the feel of it. Like it, it is a, tra- like mm-hmm. we do ser- church service on a Sunday right. and, and to be doing something outside of that, there's some sense to, f- to feeling wrong about mm-hmm. that. But just because it feels wrong, is it wrong? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, we can't ignore there that Jesus Jesus rose on the first day of the week. We know in the Old Testament that the seventh day of the week was set apart and holy, and we which we, is Saturday, yeah, which was Saturday, mm-hmm. and and we clearly in the New Testament do not see that being something that God set up for the followers of Jesus to continue to hold the seventh day sacred. And so it's really easy now in New Testament times to just flip that and say, okay, now Sunday is sacred. And that's mm-hmm. been kind of the history of our culture in America as well. And, and, and really across the world where Christianity was prevalent is Sunday had a sacredness to it. And we can't deny that. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus rose on the first day of the week, primarily, I would say, through the years and the ages, Christians have prioritized Sunday as a meeting day. But when we go back, we go back to scripture, like if we go all the way back to Acts chapter two, which is where we say was the beginning of the church, mm-hmm. right at the beginning, they were meeting, they were meeting every day. They were meeting yeah. every day at that time. So when we think about scriptural precedent, we don't take that lightly. We mm-hmm. we for, we always want to honor God. We don't want to just say we've got a good idea. We want to go do it. Right. We want to say, does God give us authority? And because we see Christians meeting on different days at different times, what we discern from that is it's important that we meet, and the Bible's clear about that too, but that God has given us, as you said, freedom mm-hmm. in this particular decision mm-hmm. on on what that might look like. Yeah, yeah. So you're referencing Acts chapter two. 
Um, yes. You know, around verse 42 kind of sums up what they're doing at this point. And this is after Peter uh, does his sermon, after thousands respond, says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled in awe at the many wonders, signs performed by the apostles. So this is what they, they did, verse 45. They sold property, possessions to give to everyone that, that had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So you see the blessing of God there in the mm-hmm. last verse of mm-hmm. being put on these people, and they, they met every day. So it wasn't, so what you're saying, there's a difference between the Old Testament where there's a clear command. Mm-hmm. In the New Testament, there's a shift, but we never see a command mm-hmm. in that shift. We see the shift happen in practice. May, it may have been a practical shift because they're meeting in the temple courts. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have done it on the Sabbath when the Jews were having their, um, you know, the different rituals that they did on the Sabbath. They needed a big place to meet. The temple was what they were used to, and they ha- had availability maybe on the first day of the week. But we also see them meeting every day. Um, mm-hmm. And so the, so I guess we're just getting at, look, there's there's some clear freedom in this. Right. You know, the earliest Christians felt free to meet outside of a Sunday mm-hmm. to fellowship and talk about God. Um, another thing that's sometimes brought up is communion. Yeah. Uh, we practice weekly communion. We think it needs to be a practice of the church that's regular. We don't see... Um, a practice outside of that in the New Testament where it becomes a monthly thing or mm-hmm. a quarterly thing. Um, and so it's it's something that we take serious and, and, and practice weekly. Um, and some see this taking communion outside of Sunday as a practice that shouldn't be done. How, how have we, you want to speak to that a little bit? And mm-hmm. Sure, absolutely. And it's, and, uh, and once again, we don't, we don't want to we don't want to minimize these. And I know we're, you know, here in a few minutes, we're able to distill some things that we've thought about for years, yes. right? you yeah. know, and thought yeah. about for years. So we don't mean to take this lightly and we're always open to more conversation, but really it's the same, it's the same process of interpretation is that we, we feel like we see communion actually in the same verse in verse 46, it mm-hmm. said they met in their houses and broke bread. And when you look at the original, the original language, it's very, very possible that what they were doing is is having communion on a daily basis mm-hmm. in that context. So we mm-hmm. we feel like just to be intellectually honest with what's in the text, what we know is going on culturally, what that means for us today, we we don't see a clear reason why we would say communion is a Sunday only. Mm-hmm. And, I, and and for a lot of us, we've we've actually we've actually done different than that for a while. We maybe were on a retreat or we're doing something special of a spiritual nature on a different day of the week. Yeah. Maybe in our small groups. I know some of us have take communion occasionally in our small groups and we feel like that is under under the freedom that we have mm-hmm. in the New Testament, that we're remembering Jesus. And right. you right. know, and he's you know, in Jesus' words, as often as you do this, you you remember me. So right. we think these things are important and that's kind of where we've landed from an interpretive standpoint of scripture. Mm-hmm. Um but but we definitely welcome additional conversations yeah. about that because we do think it's important. Yeah, yeah, and there's places like Acts 20 that um, show you know here in this context Paul taking communion very serious. It says he mm-hmm. he wanted to break bread with them, so he stuck around. Um, but then there's this guy Eutychus falls out a window, <laughs> throws the church. I mean, how about that for a church service where you, somebody falls out the window? Yeah. And you're like, okay, we got to stop this a little bit, and they do. And then it says, because Paul was preaching for a long time, teaching. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Eutychus is in the window, falls asleep, um, falls out the window, and uh, he says, fell to the ground. The third story was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed. He said, he's alive. So then they went upstairs and broke bread and ate. Uh, so they actually took communion after this, and it was after midnight, right? So again, another instance where they didn't take communion on the first day of the week, but it would have been technically the second day of the week, right? Yeah, and it seems like they intended to. It's just that Paul preached too long. <laughs> right, which, you know, Thursday might happen if the Spirit leads me, Joshua. It might be communion on Friday. Leads, I can't. <laughs> We can have uh, a we can have a, a, a like a Christmas Eve midnight service. I mean that was the 
that was the whole idea of the Christmas Eve service originally. You would start at 11 ish, right? Yeah, and by right. the time you got done, it was actually Christmas, Christmas Day. Day. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned Acts 20 and 7. One other instance in the New Testament is 1 Corinthians 16, 2, where it says they met together on the first day of the week. And that, in that time, they mentioned the discipline of giving. And they were, they were gathering some funds at that time mm-hmm. to help some, some needy people. And so we have these two instances where it mentions the first day. So once again, we have to concede with, with no, you know, no problem at all. First day was a, the first day of the mm-hmm. week was a special day. Mm-hmm. But yet these other things, I think, do show us because there's other authorized examples, if you will, where God saw this was happening and it was approved and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't condemned or it wasn't that it was taught against. It happened at different times. So when we see that in Scripture, we feel like there's freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, anything else before we go? Anything else, details, anything that came to your mind as far as Thursday service? Well, we just, we just appreciate everyone's support. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you can think of somebody in your life, maybe a healthcare worker, maybe a restaurant worker, maybe a retail worker, or just someone that has some, some strong commitments. I mean, maybe you know these people are not following Jesus. Maybe they have a hobby. They love to golf every Sunday. But you might say, hey, would you come to church with me on a Thursday night? Mm-hmm. And they might say, oh, sure, you know, and, and come with them. And uh, just just think about think about that opportunity that's there. So I think um, I think there's some huge opportunities ahead for us all. Yeah, I mean the number one way, reason people come to church is a personal invite. Absolutely. And so that goes a long way. So starting September fifth, seven to eight o'clock, mm-hmm. Thursday service here at Norwin Christian Church, ninety six ten Barnes Lake Road. In case you don't know, yeah. uh, on the hill behind Walmart. No, I mean not right behind Walmart. Same road as Walmart. We can see Walmart from our parking lot. Um, we would love to see you here, family here. Bring a friend. Let them know, hey, you'll save a seat for them. You'll meet them out in the parking lot. Bring them in. Um, overwhelmingly, we found out from people when we asked this group uh, whether we should have coffee and snacks. It was a yes, absolutely. So there will be coffee and snacks, regular coffee. I, like I'm ready for decaf by 7 o'clock, but people were like, no, give me the strong stuff. So that will be available. We'll have cookie snacks. We want to be hospitable. We want to be very welcoming. And so we would love to see anybody from the Norwin or surrounding communities here starting September 5th. That's our kickoff service. We're really excited about it. Absolutely. So we're not, you know, and if folks, you, you, Sunday's your regular place, but you're just curious, you're, you're welcome to drop in. Yeah, so you're welcome. Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged. Thank you for tuning into NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services. Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays starting September 5th at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.